This is System Trader Show, episode number two. Welcome to System Trader Podcast. Listen to interviews with top traders and find out how the most successful traders beat the markets and what are the secrets of their success. This is System Trader Podcast with your host, Jack Lempart. Today I have a great pleasure to interview Thomas Streetsman. He is very well known in the industry of system trading, having over 20 years of experience. He was writing for Futures magazine in the 90s. He's an author of two books, Trading Systems at Work, and the second one, Trading Systems and Money Management. At the moment, Thomas is running his fund at Alphacraft in Sweden, where he's using strategies based on short-term trend-following approach. In this episode, we talk about his approach to trading, the importance of position sizing, how to build a robust strategy, and artificial intelligence. I hope you will enjoy the show. Hi, Thomas, and welcome to my podcast. Hi, Jacek. Nice to be here. Thank you very much for accepting my invitation to the show. Uh, could you please give us some background, especially regarding your system design research and trading career? Oh, wow. My, my trading career. Um, let's see. I actually started out as a, as a journalist or a reporter and analyst for a financial daily here in Sweden back in the uh, 90s. I was writing analysis articles over like uh, uh, short term uh, uh, markets, uh, what happened in the market in the short term. And uh, for that, I, I uh, used uh, technical analysis as a, as, a, as a tool for my, for my uh, writing and, and research. And uh, doing that, I also became interested in, in, in uh, systematic uh, strategies. At first, I came in, in contact with a systematic uh, trader, a Norwegian guy that showed me his strategies. And, and uh, uh, seeing his results, I started to, to uh, try it on my own using mostly Excel back in the day and uh, things like Equis Metastock software. This was back in the 90s. So a long time ago. And being a programmer and, and computer type of guy, I, 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 I really liked it. Uh, it was for me. So eventually, uh, I managed to land a job as a systems trading expert and writer for Futures magazine in Chicago. Don't ask me why they went for a Swedish guy for, for this position, but, but, uh, I, I got the job and I worked as a systems, a systems, uh, design expert for them and it was my job then to to uh, write articles on my own but also to find uh, American experts to write articles uh, for me. So naturally I, I learned a lot from a lot of experts in the field and I became friends with many of these, these people. Uh, eventually uh, I landed a job as a senior researcher for Rotella Capital which was one of the biggest uh, CTAs uh, back in the day, day. This was like early 2000, around there. Uh, but eventually I decided to move back to Sweden. And uh, since about 2008, 2009, I'm uh, running my own uh, CTA uh, hedge fund uh, together with a couple of colleagues here in Sweden. And uh, as such, I trade uh, commodity futures. So that's what I'm uh, still doing today. Uh, thank you, Thomas, for that introduction. Um, so let's talk a bit more about your approach to trading uh, within your fund. And uh, we'll also talk about some other topics around it. Um, my first question is, how many strategies and how many markets you are trading within your fund? Okay, markets, uh, easy then. It's about uh, 30 different markets. Uh, strategies, um, that's when the, the answer becomes a bit more complicated. I trade only one type of strategy, but I trade uh, with several systems. But all the systems are specifically targeting the very same strategy. They're just using different entry exit uh, uh, points on, on, uh, on the chart, so to speak. And my strategy is short term trend following. Uh, which means that I'm, 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 uh, I'm trend following in the sense that I'm doing, uh, breakouts and I'm following, lo following longer term trends, but I'm trying to stay as, as, uh, short term within that realm as, as, uh, possible. 
Okay, and you're trading mostly le- on the futures market? Uh, only futures markets. I trade about uh, 30 different uh, uh, futures markets uh, in commodities, uh, interest rates, currencies, and equities. And within the commodity field, you have like uh, agricultural markets, you have energy markets, you have metals, metal markets. Okay, and when you say a short-term strategy, uh, trend-following strategy, what does it mean to you on average for how long the positions are opened? Okay, uh, for, uh, uh, for, for a trend-following strategy, I try to be as short-term as I possibly can. Uh, and you really can't go any shorter term that, than what I do if you, if you want to remain trend follower. And that means that my losing trades last for around five to six days. Uh, my winning trades lasts for around or a little bit over 20 days. And uh, then because I have like uh, one winner for every two losers, a hit ratio of about 33%, that means that the average trade length for me, for all trades included, comes out to about uh, 10 to 11 days. And that's basically as short term as you can go while you remain a trend uh, follower. Okay, thank you, Thomas, very much for that. Uh, it's very interesting uh, what you say, because uh, typically when we think about the uh, trend following uh, strategies, we usually think about weeks or months and here you say that uh, in your case uh, when you are having a position which is losing you are closing it typically after five six days and uh, it's only in the case when it's a winning trade it 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 takes uh, like up to 20 days but normally still i mean when someone thinks about the trend following strategy it's quite let's say unusual in the way we think how we see the trend following strategies Yes, that, that's that's uh, that's true. Uh, normally, a trend following strategy, uh, and also the way I once started in this business was normal trend following strategy with the losing trades maybe lasting uh, one or maybe even two months, and winning trades lasting like um, six months to uh, a year. But but uh, we also tra- tend to to uh, fool ourselves a little bit in thinking that the trend following strategy is longer term than it actually is. It is shorter shorter term than you think because most of your trades will be losers, and the losers you want to get out of as soon as possible anyway. So so normally we think of trend following we 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 see those one, two, three uh, fantastic winning trades that last forever as, as uh, typical for what, for what the trend following strategy is. But, uh, but that's not so. But anyway, uh, for me, uh, I try to stay at the very shorter end. For one thing, it's, it's, um, it's not exploited by others. I seem, I seem to be alone. And that, that, uh, leaves room for me to be uncorrelated to the, to the business. Right. Interesting. So it's a kind of a niche, uh, to you, uh, in which you're specializing. Um, uh, thank you, Thomas, for that. Uh, uh, it's very, very interesting. Another question I would like to ask you is, um, regarding the strategies. Are they using only purely, uh, let's say technical analysis uh, signals or do you have maybe some elements of, uh, fundamental analysis involved as well. I, I know that this this border between the fundamental analysis and technical analysis may be not so obvious. So by saying the technical analysis, I mean here that you follow only the prices. So you don't use, let's say, any news or any reports. It it just doesn't mean anything to you. Yeah. So uh, the way you defined your, your uh, question, in terms of the entry exit uh, systems, the code that I use to find my entry exit in, in the markets. Yes, I'm, I'm, uh, um, strictly, uh, technical analysis and I view price data or, or let's call it short data. Then you have price data, you have open interest, you have, have a volume. And sometimes I use volume, but, but 95% is, is pure price data for that specific market only. So yes, uh, very simple technical analysis. 
I even, I even, uh, the, the longer I keep doing this, the, the simpler, the easier my entry exit stra- uh, systems, uh, let's use the right term there, systems, uh, becomes in terms of, 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 uh, code or, or complicated algorithms. It, it's, it's very simple. It's moving averages. It's crossovers. It's Bollinger bands. And it's, uh, it's uh, highest high, lowest low type breakouts. That's what it is. Is your trading fully automated or the systems uh, you have are only, let's say, generating signals, which are then manually executed on the market? Uh, I don't know if you could, should call, what you should call this. Uh, uh, yes. They, they they are fully automated with <laughs> with like one manual interim uh, uh, step. Uh, the way I do it is that I use one piece of software every morning to 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 uh, write out a report that generates all the the the, the levels and and the number of contracts to buy and sell for all markets and systems. Okay, and this. This report, I could easily connect the API between one piece of software to the other piece of software and just have this report sent automatically from one piece of software to the other. But I do print it out and look at it and then type it in in the second piece of software by hand every morning. And this second piece of software then, this that's my, my, my uh, interface to, to my uh, uh, broker. Okay, so I have the report in front of me and I type in the numbers exactly as they are given to me and send them to my broker in London. So now the orders are resting on their server in London. There, there are no other decisions like made on my part. Uh, like I, I can, if I get a signal, I will wait for the entry and take it later or I will trade a few contracts now and more contracts later and things like that. There's no such such decisions on my part. So from that point of view, I'm 100% automatic, but I do have this this uh, uh, simple little step in between. I don't even need to have it this step to to uh, check things are running correctly. It's it's more likely that I will be the one doing a mistake in in my typing. I'm just having it there so it gives me some kind of feel of for actually being a trader. Otherwise, I could stay in bed all morning and go play golf in the afternoon and I wouldn't know heck about trading. So this is just for, for, for the fun of trading. I have this step. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. So it also maybe helps you to come up with some new ideas. I mean, trading ideas because you are, as you said, you're not fully... Uh, cut off from the market, you you do some uh, part, let's say, uh, by hand. So so you can, as you said, feel the markets and then you are closer to the markets rather than just uh, blindly uh, follow the... I mean, you are following the system, but it's not like the computer is doing everything automatically for you, but you are just having some, let's say, uh, control over it. No, that's true. That's, 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 uh, that's a very good, good point. You know, once I have developed the system... Uh, it's hands off from that system for many, many years. Come good time or bad time, I keep my hands off it and let it do what it does. But the system is developed by me because of some idea I once had, you know, and and, um, things go for, for systems I will build in the future. They come from some kind of idea. And usually I can get those ideas when I'm sitting with this piece of paper uh, in the morning and I can go like, oh, hmm, that was interesting. Why, why, wonder why that happened. Uh, what kind of anomaly is that? What kind of discrepancy is, is that? Let's see if I can code something up quickly to see if, if, uh, if uh, I can capture some new, some, some new money making potential or something like that. So yeah, that's, that's true. That's, that's how I get my ideas. Right, I, I understand. And could you tell us a bit what software and what tools you're using for, in the first place, development of your of your <coughs> strategy, and then uh, the tools uh, and the software you're using for uh, execution of this strategy? 
Okay. Uh, can I start with the second part? That's that's quicker. Uh, 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 <laughs> for for execution, I I use uh, 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 IB. What's the what's the their full name? Interactive Brokers is that the name in in in, uh, in uh, London? And I I use their their uh, uh, software mostly because it's it's very easy to understand and they have uh, have uh, very dynamic ways of applying uh, stops and stop losses so especially to to positions that are not yet active so you can manage stops on positions that are still waiting to be taken that's that's important to me so anyway that was that was the second part the first part is that uh, uh I mostly use a piece of software called Traders uh, Studio, and uh, I'm doing this because I'm I'm uh, I'm basically old school. You know, I'm starting out this uh, this uh, thing back in uh, 1995, something like that. You know, at first, and then you had like software like uh, Equus, MetaStock. You had early versions of tr- uh, Trade Station and and uh, those type of, of software. So you you invest a lot of time and energy and 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 um, research hours in 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 getting to understand a piece of software. So uh, you kind of build yourself stuck a little bit. So right now I'm stuck in what's called Trader Studio. Trader Studio is a piece of software that's based on TradeStation ideas and TradeStation ways of 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 uh, of. Uh, coding uh the strategies uh but it's it's much more sophisticated it, it has uh, much better money management uh capabilities than than trade station ever had i don't know how trade station is today but but uh when i used it uh everything i now can use in trade you do in trader studio in terms of of uh, money management uh position sizing algorithms and so on i i previously had to do in uh, in Excel. So for example, my books are written using TradeStation and Excel. And all that stuff I can now do in Trader Studio. So are you using also uh, the easy language or some other programming uh, language? Well, yeah, sort of, sort of. Traders, Traders Studio is, is, is basically a, a, a take on, on uh, easy language. I think you can you can uh, import and export uh, easy language to uh, to and from uh, Trader Studio. Uh, now that said, I, I I would like to to point out that I am uh, I am sort of uh, doing research in other platforms as well, such as uh, uh, mostly R. Actually, I don't know if you heard of the programming language uh, R. Yeah, uh, so. I'm doing a lot of research there, and especially when it comes to uh, uh, more modern stuff, such as uh, machine learning and, uh, well, maybe artificial intelligence. I haven't really started that yet, but at least machine learning techniques, such as, as uh, uh, trees, uh, things like that. So, so uh, yeah, R is the way to go for me in the future. Okay, thank you, Thomas, for that. Um, before we'll go uh, more about the position sizing, which you mentioned a bit before, I want to ask you one more question regarding your fund. Because on your website, I found that um, the fund's average annual return target is around 15%, which seems to be a lot in the era of very low interest rates. However, I, however, I also noticed that... Um, Three uh, recent years were quite difficult, although the beginning of the fund, which was like, um, I don't remember, eight, nine years ago, was very good. And now again, the, 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 the system is working very well and you have a very good results. Is there any, um, any explanation uh, why there was a poorer, uh, let's say, period for this type of strategies you're using, and now it's again on track. Yeah, very, very good, uh, uh, complex question, and, and, and a very tough question. Uh, also, I would like to say, uh, as a CTA uh, type trend follower, we should all have to ask those questions a bit more f- frequently, actually, because uh, currently. 
none of us are living up to the results that we are, uh, or at least that we once were aiming for. And those are like 15 to 20 percent on average per year. I, I mean, uh, where to start? Well, let's let's put it this way, like uh, uh, 15 years ago, 10, 15, 20 years ago, uh, trend followers back then, they, they could easily uh, take 15 to 20 percent per year on average uh, uh, from the markets. OK, but one reason uh, uh, they could do so was that you had interest levels around uh, six to eight percent, maybe even even higher. Uh, this is for, this is for two reasons. Uh, one is a lot of, a large portion of what a CTA make is actually risk free interest because we have a, we have margin money. We have most of the money liquid and we're making money on the risk free rate. Uh, second thing is that, that, uh, when, uh, the rates are high, uh, the markets simply produce the type of volatility that that uh, allows a, a trend following CTA to to uh, make a larger return uh, sort of a little similar thing with the equity markets when the interest rates were were, were higher you you can get a higher return out of ec- uh, the the equities uh, the markets simply demand that they want interest price plus some some uh, uh, risk premium you know uh, but with interest uh, very close to uh, zero, uh, the volatility uh, behavior of all markets, equity markets, commodity markets, and so on, are such that you simply can't get those 15 to 20 percent per year on average. Okay, so uh, that said, uh, let me then say that sure, you can get 15 to 20 percent from, from like uh, just one year here and there, but you will not get it on average. And I think most um, CTAs, they have not accepted uh, that fact quite yet. For one thing, it all, it takes us all many years to to react to the fact because we we are working we are building our strategies on historical data so we, we need to build up the history over a couple of years before we can actually come to a conclusion that hey uh 15 is no longer there i need to re- i need to lower my my return target and uh, personally i have done so twice over the last uh, uh few years and uh, uh, for, for now, my return target is actually like on average, let's say around 10% a year. That's, that's where I'm targeting. And, uh, and as, low as, as long as I'm doing lower than that, uh, you can still have a losing year. The strategy can still not sort of produce you a good year. That's, that's fine. That's still within, uh, that's still within what can be expected that's just within the statistics of the of your uh, strategy but long term i am currently i am looking for maybe eight to ten percent a year and that's 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 how much you can can ask these days did i answer your question there in any way or do we need to maybe talk a bit uh, more about it this is a good topic i think that's still uh, even with uh, saying ten percent, eight ten percent, what what you uh, achieved in your uh, fund Alphacraft, it's still you are very good in terms of what the competition is doing, uh, competitors are doing. Um, so basically, it's as you said, probably that maybe some other uh, players they don't understand that the conditions changed and that the expectation also needs to be let's say aligned to that new conditions. And maybe that puts you aside from what the other competitors are doing, because I see that indeed uh, Alphacraft is uh, outperforming, at least in Sweden, your main competitors, right? Yes. So that's a very, very, very good, uh, very good result. Well, I, uh, let me let me let me give you an example there. Uh, uh, what happens if you have a too high return target is is that you you are trading uh, too large positions. You, you are, you are simply risking too much and you are producing way too much, uh, uh, 
volatility, unnecessary volatility uh, for, for, for the return that is uh, uh, possible. Okay, so for example, what happened this uh, February is a, was a, it's a typical example, you know, like, like uh, uh, this February, just one month ago, the industry as a whole had its worst month for, I think, the last 17 years or something like that. You know, like, like uh, even, even uh, most indices, trend following indices, were, were dropping like in the neighborhood of 7 to 10 percent. Individual uh, trend following uh, CTAs were dropping like 10 to 13, 15 percent in one month's performance. You know, this is, these are numbers that are for one month worse than, than uh, what many uh, largest drawdowns used to be back in, back in the older days. And this is because they, they have not realized that you cannot look for 20% anymore. You need to lower your risk and, and uh, start looking much lower. I was basically, as far as I know, the only CTA, uh, I can't remember now, did, I think we made money. I think I was up 2% or something like that. That's because my algorithms uh, before moving into February they were giving me these entry exit signals. You should enter an exit here. And then I looked at the, that the, the position sizing algorithms and the position, position sizing algorithms. They were saying zero, 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 meaning no positions. I was, my, my algorithms did not allow me to trade. Right. I see that you are paying a significant focus on position sizing. And, um, actually it seems like you spent much less time on designing the entries and exits. Uh, so could you please uh, explain that a little bit more? Yeah, I think I discovered when I, when I, I, I uh, wrote my first book back in 99, 2000, Trading Systems That Work, I think I discovered uh, then that, that uh, uh, position sizing is way more important for your bottom line than where to enter and exit exactly. In fact, you, you, you can, and I, 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 I possibly could put together uh, a strategy with, with uh, random entry and exits and make that profitable with, with uh, good position sizing. So, so uh, it's much more important to focus on position sizing. And just in, as, as we talked about trend following, short term trend following strategy, uh, focusing on position sizing gives me a niche, you know, uh, this is an area, uh, underdeveloped by by most uh, CTAs. Uh, as, at least I have reason to believe that if I judge their performance. Right. I know that you are using um, in your position sizing the optimal F and it's a very well known uh, uh, thing in the world of uh, bet sizing and it was very well uh, described by uh, Ralph Vins. Could you please explain us um, very shortly what optimal F is and how you exactly uh, are applying it in your trading because very often we know that optimal F, I mean, trading the optimal F, it's, it's, it's just a nightmare because it gives you a very huge uh, drawdown. So how do you exactly apply uh, optimal F in your uh, trading? Well, uh, in regards to your question, Optimal F is very difficult <laughs> and da dangerous to, to, uh, uh, to trade b because it doesn't take any other considerations than, than trying to maximize your, your, uh, your, your end return, your, your final equity. So the optimal F formula doesn't care if, if you have a, 90% drawdown one week, as long as you're up 110% uh, the next, the next day, or how many hundred uh, percent you need to be break even again, or, or something like that. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, uh, consider that. That's why, that's why no, no trader can, can, can trade the, it's true optimal F. 
And for sure, no investor can invest with a trader that trades optimal F because the actual investor, the, the people that put money on your fund, they can take even less volatility than, than, than the, the trader can. So from that point of view, optimal F is like, like you can't use it. But one thing is that you need to know about it. You need to know where you have your optimal F. And, and uh, you need to, to uh, uh, picture uh, uh, the curve, the relationship between your position sizing and, and uh, your, your equity and the volatility that, uh, that uh, position sizing uh, produces. And, and you know where on, on this curve you are placing yourself. Where on the curve, uh, what type of return volatility uh, uh, relationship will you have given different type of, of uh, uh, position sizes uh, or fractions? Optimal F stands for, 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 for fraction of equity to risk and optimal as optimal uh, in optimal F terms is just optimizing equity. Now, knowing that is good. But, but you should not just limit yourself to, to accepting optimal F according to theory of Ralph Vince, which is good and correct and, and super important, but nothing forces you or keeps you from, from uh, developing your own optimal F. Optimal, uh, put it optimal according to any, any constraints that you would like to, to see. Uh, maximum drawdown allowed, uh, maximum uh, exposure in terms of margin or leverage, uh, maximum uh, volatility and, and so on. And, and optimal, uh, find your optimal fraction of equity to risk according to those constraints. That's basically what I have done. Okay, thank you very much for that. So just to summarize it, you are, let's say, still using the spirit of the optimal F, but with uh, some constraints and of course using a fraction of what optimal F says to you. So basically it's not like if someone would think that you are just trading the full optimal F because that would, um, that would bring you a huge drawdown on the, on the equity line, but you just imply, implement your own constraints and, and, uh, you just use the fraction of, of, of the optimal F. Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Thomas, for that. Um, you are systematic and quantitative type of trader. Um, have you chosen such path for uh, trading because it's uh, it's uh, very uh, linked to your personality, or maybe there were some other reasons why you didn't want to go uh, in the way which uh, discretionary trading are, are, are going? Well, it's it's it's. Uh it's definitely a, a, a personality issue in, in that, that I sort of like to solve problems. To me, to me, it's not actually about trading and make money and become rich from the markets, you know. To me, the, the markets uh, uh, provide you a sort of a problem that you like you would like to solve before you die kind of thing. Like uh, they provide you a problem, like a really, really hard crossword puzzle for those who are into that, you know, same type of thing. I, I got to solve this before I can go to bed kind of, kind of, kind of thing. So from that point of view, it's, it's, uh, it really fits my, my personality and, and uh, my way of thinking analytically and, and uh, systematically and to then apply code, write, write uh, beautiful R code to, to discover something. I mean, that's, that's a joy. Uh, so from that point of view, yeah, sure. Uh, it's, it's a personality thing. Now that said, I have a funny, sort of a funny little episode when I got started uh, when I first started to actually trade systematically with my own uh, money back in the 90s, uh, I talked to a few friends of mine from the university that with similar minds like mine into uh, uh, 
building a strategy. I think we were using uh, Excel and, and Equus Metastock. And we, we built a systematic strategy that we then started to trade with, with the money we put together, the three of us. And in the beginning, we were, we were actually doing great from, I don't know, from pure luck or if the system was that good or something like that. We were trading, we were tra- trading OMX, uh, uh, futures and, and options here in, in Stockholm. And we made a lot of money. But then we, we, we came together and we said like, Hey, this is kind of boring. You know, we're just sitting here watching the system do its thing. Uh, but we're traders. We, we, we can make more money if we start to trade uh, discretionary. So if it had taken us like sort of a, a year to make all this money, uh, we lost it all and, and uh, then some in a couple of weeks trading discretionary. So that's when I decided never, never, ever discretionary for me. And I have not placed one discretionary trade since then. Okay, I understand. But I think that uh, if we uh, have some uh, discretionary traders which are successful, in fact, even they, they are using... Um, a kind of a systematic approach. Uh, this, uh, recently, I, I, I interviewed uh, Linda Rashke and she described herself as discretionary. But in fact, when she described her approach to the markets, she's still modeling the markets. So she knows uh, where the probabilities are. And she just um, takes the decision by herself. But in the background, she has uh, done uh, her homework and, and is, and is performing in a very, let's say, systematic approach. Yes. Yeah. I, I think that, that, that here maybe the misunderstanding is that sometimes the discretionary means that it's a total chaos, whereas maybe even someone using some discretionary approach will still be using some disciplined uh, procedure. Very much so. A very, 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 uh, correct observation, Jacek. Uh, uh, yeah, during, uh, during my Chicago years, I, I also came to know a lot of, uh, uh, good systematic or, or excuse me, a good discretionary, uh, uh, traders. And actually, uh, Linda, I think she's in, in Florida, Boca Raton or something like that, uh, being one of them, uh, I used to be very close friend with Linda back in the day. We don't meet each other. I haven't seen her in many, many years, but if she listens to this, uh, I'd be happy to come and visit in, in, in Florida. Anyway. Yeah. Now she's in Chicago, by the way. She mostly. is. She is. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. I, I need to look her up. Uh, in fact, I do have a book of hers. Uh, I have a, uh, that I, I need to return somehow, but, uh, uh, more about that later. <laughs> uh, anyway, yes, you're right, Jacek. Uh, uh, every successful discretionary trader I have met, uh, 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 and especially the commodity traders in Chicago, then, the, the more successful they are, the more systematic they also have been in their own heads without even sort of realizing or, or knowing it themselves. You know, they have had a very strict, uh, uh, cool, calculated approach to the markets. And the most easy thing is that they know how to take a stop. You know, they know how to take a stop and, and, and a loss. That's, that's what they do without uh, uh, second thinking. Another thing is that... that uh, the, the technical analysis field, it's like full of like, like gazillion different type of indicators and, and uh, oscillators and, and uh, various tools you can do for, for, for using in your decision making. But most discretionary traders, they use a very limited set of tools and equations and so on that they are very familiar with and they, that they can easily apply in their own heads in, in a, in a totally systematic, uh, manner. So yeah, the, 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 the best discretionary traders are in fact also very systematic traders, except it takes place in their own heads instead of, uh, having to code it into, into a computer. Now, short break for our sponsor of the show, Candle Scanner. Candle Scanner is a technical analysis software package 
created for investors interested in candle patterns. What makes candle scanner application exceptional is that, from the outset, it has been specifically designed for the detection of candle patterns. It is not just an add-on to an existing analysis platform, but a specialist charting application written by people with an extensive knowledge of the topic of candlestick patterns. It is suitable for both seasoned traders and complete beginners. With Candle Scanner, you can do the following. Quickly scan candlestick charts to find all occurrences of candle patterns. Measure the efficiency of patterns, that is, are they working as you expect them to? Build trading strategies based on candle patterns and simulate transactions. And soon, define any custom pattern you want, then scan the charts and measure its efficiency. And all this without any coding. Please visit candlescanner.com for more details. What do you think is the, if, if there is a right approach to make sure that what we designed, I mean, the trading ideas we come up with, that they are not uh, suffering the curve fitting or data mining bias? I know that it's, 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 it's very difficult to say that, but I mean, do you have any tips how to build a model so that it has a better chance to work on the market? Is there anything like that? <laughs> no, an, an, another very good question, and, and this, this, uh, no, I, I, I don't have any such tip. Actually, look at it. Look at it this way. Like, I mean, from from a strictly scientific academic point of view, once you have used one time series for 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 like. One just just one run of fun finding entry exit strategies or, or finding parameters for for entry exit. You have used that time series scientifically, academically speaking, whatever. Uh, you sh- you should not be allowed to use that time series ever again. You know, but here we are, uh, and we we are applying. We are doing like millions and and tens of millions. Of, of runs over a very limited set of maybe 50 different time series in the commodity markets and we do it over and over and over again so so just there you have a huge huge uh, uh, um, curve fitting uh, 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 bias dilemma how, how, how do you deal with that I, I I know of no way than just using the same time series again and again and and uh, we all all do it am I am I somehow answering your question here shall, shall we yes yes definitely yes uh, but just uh, if we go a, a little bit further so when you are preparing your models and uh, you have a set of data are you using uh, the whole set at once, or you are just leaving, you put aside some um, part of it, just let's say for out of sample testing, just to just to verify uh, still uh, in in the in uh, on the computer if the system or the model you have created is um, is is working on the data which was unseen. Uh, for the most part, when I use normal technical analysis. Uh, I basically use all available data uh, uh, for for one thing. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've been doing, I've been running so many systems. So and and uh, whether I like it or not, I'm I'm uh, so biased and I'm so. Uh, aware, like, like aware ahead of time where the results will, 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 uh, sort of happen, where they, where they will, will, will come, you know. I know beforehand, before I run a system, uh, uh, whether it will be a good, a profitable system, system or a negative system. Uh, I don't need the confirmation from, from, uh, from, uh, uh, out of same sample data when it comes to the, the, the technical analysis type type systems and also as I mentioned as far as as far as as, as uh, 
uh, polluting the data or, or, or using contaminated data or, or data that is, is now full of my own bias. I mean, that damaged in, damage in terms of, of, uh, me happened back in, uh, 96, 97 already when I started. And, and that goes for all of us. What can you do? You only have this much data to deal with and, and, uh, that's just fact of life. In fact, a friend of mine used to say that that uh, he who he who he, could, he who can uh, curve it the hardest and uh, get away with it, he wins the game. And that's speci- that's basically true. Oh, that's very interesting what you say. But also, it's uh, I think very important aspect here which you mentioned uh, uh, before that the, for example, entries and exits you 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 are designing are in fact very simple. So, so in fact, you're not com- uh, making complex, uh, uh, complex, uh, setups. You're just based on a very simple things. And that's maybe also helping you to, to make it robust. Yes. Yes. Uh, exactly. Uh, again, to what, what my friends say, he who can curve it the hardest and gets away with it. That get away with it part is important, you know. You need to you need to stop the curve fitting at a certain level where you feel confident that you can get away with it. So that's basically what you're doing. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Thomas. Yeah, uh, do you wanted to add something? Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, I, 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 I think. I mean, if you ask if you ask me the same question again, I would probably answer um, sort of the same but differently. So we could talk about this for for uh, the rest of the day. <laughs> okay, so um, I've got another question to you. What is your view on using some aspects of artificial intelligence within trading? Yeah, just the way you ask the question, like simple, uh, like like that. I'm all for it, and I think it's the way to uh, go. And I'm starting to look into a little bit I- into it a little bit my my myself, or to be be more correct, uh, uh, maybe not artificial intelligence as the term is being used today like like uh, involving like like uh, uh, neural nets and deep learning type things and recognize a dog from a cat those kind of issues but more in terms of of uh, machine learning and classification algorithms like like uh, logistic regressions uh, random forest type trees, a, ADA boost, uh, uh, Q boost and, and, and what have you there. I think we have a lot to do. Okay. So, so you definitely see a future here for, for, for such approach. Absolutely. Absolutely. I do. And what do you think then about, uh, software, which is now available, uh, actually, uh, to everyone, which, um, basically discovers and, even is coding uh, trading strategies automatically using, for example, uh, genetic uh, programming or machine learning approach as well. So basically uh, what you had to do normally before uh, with your, with your eye and, and just try and, and, and test and try and, and, and code. And it was very, maybe uh, boring or very time consuming. Now you can automate that, uh, procedure. Do you think that such kind of uh, software may be helpful, or it's just a trap? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, now the question becomes a little different. I, I think now, now I think we might be into what you call trap territory here. That that uh, that uh, uh, basically what, you, what the way the way it sounds to me is what you're describing is something that is sort of like a technical analysis software like Traders Studio or, or Traders uh, uh, Trade Station, uh, but, but uh, filled with some uh, artificial intelligence uh, algorithm generators. What, what shall we call them? Can we call them that? Artificial intelligence algorithm generators uh, uh, that, 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 that feels sort of the same purpose as, as uh, the many thousands of technical indicators you can find in any, any technical analysis platform like Trader Studio or TradeStation then. They, they are only there to deceive you and fool you and you get too many options and you will uh, uh, 
curve it too hard and you will uh, jump from one strategy to the next, the one that looked best uh, uh, during your last hypothetical trade while you actually lost your last real trade. And then you're shifting to another strategy that, that uh, will only make you lose again. So no, from, from, uh, from the way I understood your question, no, I don't, I don't see a, a, a good future for, for artificial intelligence in trading used that specific way. Do you think that trading nowadays is harder than it used to be uh, in the era of, uh, of uh, markets which are dominated by the computers? Do you think that it's harder now to, to make money on the markets? Yeah, well, it's it's harder, first of all, with the interest levels being as they, they are, it's harder for even a, a successful, disciplined, uh, discretionary trader to make uh, money today back back then because the volatility levels, uh, uh, the, the vol- volatility behavior of the market is such that that it's harder to find the the profit generating moves uh second as we talked about earlier i think if you are living somehow like sort of a, uh, in the past in that that you think you can trade just as aggressively as you did 10 15 years ago then even the strategies that that would be profitable uh, will be losing strategies for you today uh, if you trade them that uh, aggressively. So, yeah, maybe it is it is harder to to make money uh, in the markets today than it was 10, 15 years ago. But then again, someone is making money. That's just the way the markets work. And uh, you ask some other trader, they will say that, no, it's easier or it's the same. You just have to adopt, adopt and so on. So, so good luck to them if they are, are able to adopt, uh, without, uh, without like any notice or, or, or in the, this really quick, quick manner, uh, to begin with. Uh, for most people, I say it's tougher. Okay, I understand. Thank you very much. Um, Thomas, uh, you have written two great books, actually, uh, especially the first one was a great uh, influence uh, to me uh, more than 10 years ago, Trading Systems That Work, that's the first one, it was written in uh, 2000, and another one, Trading Systems and Money Management from uh, 2003. Both these books are already pretty old, but do you see anything now different to what what you have uh, described there at that time? Well, yes, I see many things. Well, first of all, let me ask you: Do you mean different in terms of other other books or other? No, other no, books? different. D- different in the way how you see uh, how you see the the things described there. I mean, do you think that the approach you described uh, in these books somehow changed now? Uh, you've got some other exper- um, uh, experience and, and, and you see this somehow differently. Not really, but uh, not really differently, but I see, I see more of it. I see, I, I have looked uh, uh, deeper into the subject. So that maybe the subject have changed for me through, through uh, uh, that reason. Uh, I still think that the, my first book, Trading Systems That Work, is 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 a very good book and, and uh, very valid and and still a very good read uh, for at least for the person that that likes to start out or take their 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 new interest into the next uh, level. That said, I personally have have uh, developed if not away from it, so deeper into the subject and a lot of the stuff that are still based on what's in the books have, have uh, 
changed quite quite a big deal. I, I put I put even more focus into uh, uh, money management and position sizing today than I did de- then. Uh, my my uh, my algorithms for money management and position sizing. Uh, uh, while considering things like optimal F look way uh, different today than they did back then and, and so on. But, but, uh, the main, uh, the main concept, the main takeaway from the book, the importance between the uh, connecting money management with, with, uh, with your entry exit system, uh, is still very valid. That's still something I, 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 uh, emphasize a lot. Okay, great. Thank you, Thomas, for that. Uh, we are getting slowly to the end of this uh, uh, interview. I've got the last question, which will be a bit, uh, I think, funny to you. Um, the cryptocurrency is a hot topic now. And uh, I know that you are trading mostly on futures, but now um, there is there are even two uh, future contracts on Bitcoin. Are you thinking or maybe you are trading about uh, uh, these, these uh, futures? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it is kind of funny, but it's, I don't know, it's also sad in the way. Like, like let, let me ask you, like, what the hell is Bitcoin? What is it for? Is it, is it, does it store value? Is it for, is it for, for facilitating, uh, uh, uh transaction? Uh, is it for buying and selling stuff? Uh, like, is it like an exchange mechanism between other uh, for other currencies or or is it for for the, the the central banks to store their like their the the i mean the country reserve in it what what the hell is it for i see no like true purpose for bitcoin in 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 uh, real life you know outside your computer and uh, i i see no no use for it it's 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 a mystery to me and sure whether it's a mystery or not uh, i i could still trade it you know if it's if it could make me money somehow but then again as i said before to to me the the being a trader and, and building systems and strategies is primarily not about making money it's about uh uh solving some kind of problem uh, uh dilemma and in in so doing i would like to take myself i don't know sort of serious somehow you know somehow think that what i'm doing uh, serves a, 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 a greater good or i'm i'm playing a part in society or i, I i'm i'm uh, i'm doing something that that i can explain to my parents in financial terms you know something that makes sense and and look myself in the mirror in the morning instead of 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 like trying to make money from i don't know from toys i don't know if, to me to me i could just if, if if trading sure people are making billions of dollars in, on their on their uh, their bitcoin good for them but for me bitcoin is just as valuable as as uh, uh, buying and selling beanie babies as you did in the 90s you know it doesn't make any sense did i answer <laughs> yeah yeah you answered yeah. I, i understand uh so thank you thank you very much for for that um okay it seems that uh we've covered all questions prepared for you today thomas um do you maybe have anything you would like to mention before we finish today's podcast oh wow what what could that be uh Not really. I think you had had some 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 very good questions that that uh, we all all CTAs should be forced to to answer from time to time or to look deeper into. And I'm sure that that uh, while the CTA industry has been in somewhat of a, a crisis performance wise, uh, a large portion of that you cannot you cannot. Uh, uh, you know uh do anything about it's just what what uh, what life gives you uh i'm quite sure that many ctas would have done better had they had the reason to be more critical over their systems and strategies just like your questions sort of 
forced me to be right now with myself. So good questions. Uh, you should ask them to every CTA on the planet. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Thomas, for that. If someone would like to learn more about you or to get in touch with you, Uh, what's the best way? Uh, I mean, they can always find me on, on uh, LinkedIn. They can use my, my uh, uh, opticizer at gmail.com uh, uh, email address. But uh, when doing so, uh, can, I, I need to ask everybody a favor. Don't ask me anything about what happened on any specific page in my uh, book and so on. I mean, sure, I, I, I wrote the book, but it was many years ago. I, I read it myself and, uh, and I too have, have uh, sort of uh, developed my research. I have, I have uh, learned from my own writing and I have moved on to, to other concepts. So feel free to ask me, ask me questions. Just don't ask me to go look at page 285 in my book to, to, to answer because it doesn't make any sense to me anymore. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas, for, for your time. Uh, I, I think we have a lot of value here for everyone. So I do appreciate and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you very thank much, Jacek. It, it was a pleasure. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for listening. I hope you like the show. For more details regarding this episode, please visit my website at systemtrader.show slash 002. Now that's all from my side. I wish you all the best. Happy trading and goodbye.